Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash. Double honors to the apostle, elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the whole full elect. I'm going to start off here in Matthew, the 10th chapter, and verse 27, then we're going to build from there. This is Matthew chapter 10 and verse 27. <clears throat> it reads, What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in, ear, in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And basically what we have been told through the Holy Spirit, beginning with our apostle, elders of Great Millstone, is that what? You so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, that will, that's what we're preaching upon the housetops when we go out there on the highways and byways, or, right? When we go out there in the streets and preach. What we're telling you is that what you so-called blacks, Latinos and Native American Indians. And though, as always, those of you who may not look so-called black, Latino or Native American Indians, right, that can receive this word. You may look so-called white. You may look so-called Chinese. You may look so-called Japanese, so-called Arab, you know, so-called um, what you call it, uh, Iranian. Right. Right. Even I'll say this, even you so-called Jewish people. Right. You may look like these other people, but look. If you can receive this word and you believe in the name, believe in this testimony and believe in the name of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, you are an Israelite. And this word, this ministry is for you. Right. I believe there's a precept that says that where uh, the Heavenly Father says, I am for you. But I can't remember it right now. Maybe Lord's when I'll pull it up after I make my point here. But basically, this is what we're out here to tell you that what right now you're slaves in this kingdom. But in the kingdom to come, you're going to be kings. Right. If you understand or know history throughout any point in history, any time there's been a nation that has been at the top and that might sound foreign to some people like what you mean, a nation was at the top. Yes. Any time in history, a nation has been at the top. Other nations have been down. If you go into history of the Bible, which is just even secular history, going back to like the Babylonians, the Babylonians were the superpower at one point. You had the Neo-Babylon Empire. And their people were looked at at the time as, you know, the greatest people on earth while the other nations were down. And that's how it's always going to be in any society, in any kingdom. Excuse me, pardon me. Anytime a nation is, you know, in rulership, they exalt their people on the top and everybody else is low. That's how it's always going to be. And that's how uh, that's how it's always been. You would be an idiot, a complete ass to let like, let's just use ourselves and Esau, for example, right? Esau hides the relics of, you know, the pictures of, you know, certain things like that of, you know, the, you know, Israelites being dark skinned. He hides the history, you know, as it says in Job 9 and 24, he covered the faces of the judges thereof. So he would be a complete ass having us in subjugation underneath him or subjection, excuse me, subjection underneath him and have us know all this history of who we are of our so I say who we truly are right because some of our people think that we're Africans but we're not of who we truly are which are the Israelites he'd be a fool to let that information out let all the information out that or the relics and pictures right icons that oh the real uh the Jews are actually black and things like that you'd be a fool to let these people know right so that's why any time in history you know the ones at the top would hide the history and do things or change things in history to make themselves look good but in the kingdom to come, we're not going to do that because we're going to rule the kingdom in truth. And when I say we, of course, Lord's willing, those of us who partake in this ministry, or should I say who the Lord has allowed us to partake in this ministry, Lord's willing, he allows us to endure and continue, that what? We will soon be the future rulers, the future kings of the planet Earth. Yes, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, right? Those of you who are of the elect, whoever, this, whoever is listening to this video, you are soon going to be a future king of this earth you're going to rule this king or uh, rule this world excuse me in righteousness now we talk about many things of the kingdom we talk about obviously the new bodies we talk about the multiple women you know and things like that but let's forget those things for a second let's forget the women for a second let's just think about that right there you're going to rule the world you're going to have a crown over your head and you're going to the, the messiah who the world alien calls jesus christ which his name in the hebrew is your shy is going to put a crown on your head and you're going to be a king of this planet under him of course obviously everything in its proper order and you're going to dictate what happens in this world in righteousness the same way you see people dictate let's just use your job people dictate what happens to you at your job or people dictate what happens at a job 
But instead of just using a job, you're going to be in charge of what happens or dictates, right, along with your fellow cohorts, of course, the other uh, members of the elect, of what goes on in this planet. Of course, again, in righteousness, right? So let me actually get this real quick. Uh, I hate when my brain goes dead. Proverbs 2. And, yeah. This is Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 2. <clears throat> It says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear it rule, the people mourn. So right now we're seeing what? Do Are people in a joyous state right now? Are people happy? No, right? Matter of fact, I'll read this in a GNT. Uh, where is it? Just so it's a lot more clearer. No, we're not doing that right now. Let me get that same precept in the GNT. Here we go. Proverbs 29 and 2 in the GNT. It says, show me a righteous ruler and I will show you a happy people. Show me a wicked ruler and I will show you a miserable people. So right now, the so-called white man, which his biblical name is Esau Edom, the Edomites, they're in rulership right now. It's this is something that has been beginning with our apostle elders. That has something that has been coming out now. Right. It's not it's becoming a household name to know about the Illuminati, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers. It's become a household no name now to know that they're the ones that are, you know, causing evil to stir in the earth, right? Other household names like, I'm just going to say it, Bill Gates, uh, even you could put Mark Zuckerberg up there. Um, what's his name? Klaus Schwab. These are household names or becoming household names now. It's no more secret. It's no more something that's hidden. It's no more something that you don't want to say, right? It's everybody is beginning to know these people and know that, okay, these are the wicked of the earth, right? Or should I say the most wicked? Because all the Edomites are wicked, but they are at the top, the ones that are able to dictate things that happen in the earth to push the world in a direction that they want it to be in, right? So dealing with the second half of the precept, it says, show me a wicked ruler and I will show you a miserable people. So that's who you know is ruling the world right now, a wicked nation, a wicked rulers, the people of the earth are not happy right now. The people of earth are mourning. There is death. There is sorrow, right, going upon the earth. But in the new kingdom to come, right, as it says in uh, Second Ezra 6 and 9, for Esau is the end of the world. And I like to say that, you know, when you think of the end of the world, everything that goes out with the person who rules, right? So when it says, and Esau is the end of the world, right, all the things that also come with Esau, death, sorrow, pain, right these things go out with him when he's taken out of power but it says again esau is the end of the world but jacob which represents the israelites right and yahweh shai being the head of that is the beginning of it that followed and what comes with that for us specifically immortality rulership right but you know trickling down to the other heathen they will be ruled over a righteous people and like it says again in proverbs 29 2 the first half it says show me a righteous ruler and yahweh shai is that righteous ruler and he's going to make his elect 144,000. right that's that will be the governing body he's also going to make them righteous rulers by putting the law statute commandments in their inward parts that way they will never go off again and the 144,000 and one third are all israel it's not a mixed multitude of many different nations or the body of believers. No, it is all Israel because the covenant, the first and the second were only for Israel. Right. You can read, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Hebrews, the eighth chapter for that. <clears throat> Paul re pretty much reiterates what uh, Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 31 and 31. Right. So again, for verse two, the first half says, show me a righteous ruler, which Yahweh is that righteous ruler. And he's going to make righteous rulers his or shall I say he's going to perfect his rulers, right, underneath him, and I will show you a happy people, right, and that begins obviously with Israel, but then it also trickles down to the heathen as well, because they're going to be happy to know that what they're being ruled over, righteous kings that are what, that are going to institute righteousness in the earth, and are going to do right by them, now they will not be on our level, the same thing like in this kingdom, are you on Klaus Schwab's level, are you on Mark Zuckerberg's level, now Mark Zuckerberg, don't get it twisted, is not an elite, but you know, he's looked at as somebody high in this world, right, someone of a high status high position look at mark zuckerberg are you on his level or what's the other guy for amazon um 
whatever the other guy that owns Amazon, Jeff Bezos, that Thwata, Thwata Lord, Jeff Bezos, are you on his level? No. Are you on the Rothschilds level? Are you on the, any of these guys level? No. Right? They're very high and you're very low as written of in the scriptures, right? They will be the head and you will be the tail. But in the kingdom to come, right? And this is all within righteousness. It's only fair that, hey, seeing as how we were the tail and they were the head and they ruled over us in wickedness, but no, we're going to do it in righteousness. We're going to be the head very soon and they're going to be the tail. Excuse me. Right? And that will be done in righteousness and we will put order in this earth. No more. I'm just going to say it, Salaki. Hopefully this video doesn't get taken down, but this is just being 100% real because these people, the way they rule is is just complete and utter nastiness, trash. It's disgusting. And just, I'm going to let out a little bit of my meditations of things that I've been looking at going on, on the earth. You look at the way this earth is being run. The, the, the fact that, you know, I was watching a live stream from the Dallas brothers, the ones, uh, Prisha R and the other brothers that are with him. And I believe a brother mentioned how there's about 20% of, uh, or if I'm not mistaken, I think like 20%, he said, or Basically, in so many words, a lot of plastic inside of whales' bodies and things like that. It's mostly consumed with plastic and things like that. So you have sea life that's eating plastic, eating something that they're not supposed to eat that's destructive for their body. The water is polluted. The air is polluted. The minds of the people is polluted. You can't have a simple relationship between a man and a woman. Then the man and the woman, is, because their minds is corrupted, they also corrupt the minds of the children. And therefore, you're going to have this cycle of the father and mother being messed up, then the children are going to be messed up. And then when they go out and interact in the world, they're also going to mess up the other people as well. And this is all done under Esau, Edom's rule, under the wicked's rule. And because of that, you're seeing what a miserable people, not a happy people. Right. So no more child trafficking, no more. None of that. Right. None of that Epstein Island, all that nonsense. No more of that. No more children going missing. No more people going missing. No more, uh, what you call it? No more homosexuals, man and man, women and women. No more of that. All that stuff brings death, right? Now, obviously, don't don't get it twisted. In the kingdom, again, the heathen will not be on our level. They will not partake in the immortality. But they will be part of what? A cleaner earth, right? They will be able to eat fresh and clean food. No more GMOs. That's another thing as well. Slacky for missing that. No more GMOs and all that. Eating fake foods that are destroying your body and really, really making your body deteriorate faster than it already is. Right? So all these things that, again, like I mentioned with uh, Second Ezra 6 and 9, for Esau is the end of the world, right? And all the things that are with Esau and all these things come with Esau. The GMOs, the fake foods, the fake people, the fake lifestyle. The Western civilization, the Western society, all these things go out with him when he's gone. But what comes in with the righteous, uh, with the righteous righteousness, the law, statute and commandments that up, uphold life, that up, uphold, you know, pretty much uh, that will uphold society and keep life or put, uh, put life in the earth. Right. You don't have to worry about your children going missing. You don't have to worry about your wife stepping on you. You women don't have to worry about a, a man probably beating you for no reason, a drunk husband and things like that. Whatever women like to worry about and things like that. Right. You won't have, you women won't have to worry about being preyed upon, right? Probably getting graped. I won't say that now, right? I won't say it how it's really supposed to be said, right? You won't have to worry about these things and things like that, right? You'll have a righteous husband ruling over you. You won't have to worry about a man, you know, screwing you over and then leaving you and things like that, right? All these things or the, the opposite of these things I just mentioned come with Esau, baby mama drama, baby daddy drama. All those things are with Esau. And they go out once he leaves. And when I say leaves, meaning that he's taken out of power by who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, which his name is Yahweh Shai. So I'm so lucky for being long winded on that point, but I just want to thoroughly explain that point. Right? So again, you so called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, and also again, those of you who may not look so called black, Latino, and Native American Indian, if you receive this word, you are of the seed of Israel. And again, this ministry is for you, right? The Heavenly Father is for you. So therefore, you're going to be a future ruler and you're going to be able to dictate what goes on in this world in righteousness under the Messiah, Yahweh Shai. Right? And to prove to you that, here is Revelation chapter 5, and I'll start verse 9, but just to give you a, uh, a little quick summary of at least the first eight verses, 
This basically goes through Yahweh Shai's sacrifice, right? The first verse you read about how there was a man sitting on the throne, right? And he had a, a book in his hand, in his right hand. And that man sitting on the throne is the Heavenly Father. And John saw, you know, pretty much Yahweh Shai, you know, go to the Heavenly Father and take the book out of his hand. And then the book had, sorry, I, was, I forgot to mention this, the book also had seven seals on it which the seven represents completion and seals, meaning that the book was completely sealed. Meaning at one point we didn't have the understanding of the book, right? Meaning that the Holy Spirit, once Yahweh Shai took the book from the Heavenly Father and opened the seals, he opened, uh, he opened the understanding uh, of the scriptures to us, giving us the Holy Spirit to be able to go into the scriptures and understand what, uh, understand the prophecies, understand who we are, go into the names of the Heavenly Father and Son, the proper names of the Heavenly Father and the Son, and to properly and correctly break down the scriptures. Because the Christian church has not done that, going into things like John 3.16, saying that for God so loved the world, but yet here it is, if you think about it, there is a plethora of scriptures where the Heavenly Father says that the heathen are counted as nothing but spittle unto him. You can go into Second Ezra, uh, the Second Ezra, the sixth chapter, if I'm not mistaken. I know that's also written of in Isaiah, the uh, I can't remember what chapter, but I know it's written of in Isaiah, the, one of the 40th chapters, right? Because Ezra was actually quoting uh, Isaiah when he said that, right? Because he says, "As are written, the heathen are, are are reputed as nothing." So Ezra actually had the scrolls of Isaiah and was reading that and was pretty much quoting Isaiah right there. That's for you, vocabulary, to sit there and say Hebrew hopscotch, <clears throat> right? So here it is. You have a plethora of things where the Heavenly Father says that you know. He's going to get vengeance on the heathen. You can go into Joel. Uh, another precept I'm th coming to mind is uh, Jeremiah 30 and 16. All these things where the Heavenly Father is talking about how much he doesn't like the heathen. They're counted as nothing. He's going to get revenge on them for the things that they did to us and how much he loves Israel, right? Micah 4, and, I'm sorry, not Micah 4. Uh, I'm sorry, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Malachi, excuse me. Malachi 1 of, uh, 1 of 4. For uh, es uh, Esau have I hated, but Jacob have I loved. Roughly paraphrasing. All these precepts, but then the one precept that you Christians bring out, oh, for God so loved the world, so now God loves everybody, not just the Israelites, but the Gentiles as well. But you have a plethora of scriptures going into how much the Heavenly Father dislikes the heathen, counts them as nothing, and he's going to pretty much put back his people, although he punished them, he's going to put them back on top and give them everything that they desire. So there's, there's a mix up there. There's a, a lack of understanding there. Does the Heavenly Father like the heathen or not? Because here it is. If you really do your diligence, you could pull up 10 priests of the Heavenly Father. It's pretty much saying that he ain't getting shit. Pardon my language. But you read John 3, 16. So it's like, what the hell? Like this man has been saying over and over how much he dislikes them. Plus Esau, he really doesn't like him. So what's going on here? Does he love him or not? Because I pull out 10 precepts. The man don't sound like he likes these people at all. It really sounds like he loves Israel the most. So there's a lack of understanding there. The Holy Spirit's been given to us, right? Beginning again with the Apostle Elders of Great Millstone, Great Millstone Elder Apostle Tar, Elder Apostle Kabar, Elder Apostle Ramlab, and so forth, Elder Apostle Bakar, to bring out the understanding that, look, the Heavenly Father has always been for the Israelites, for you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians who are, be who are being called these bywords today. You're being called African Americans. You're being called Negroes, right? Spick, Spanish. These are bywords. This is not who you truly are. When you read Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter, you fit those curses. Those curses that are written of in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter, when you read from verses 15 to 68, they fit you not those who are living in the land currently calling themselves Jews, which they don't even call themselves Israelites, they call themselves Jews. Those curses, those prophetic curses, if I could say that, fit you. They don't fit nobody else on this earth. So going again, showing you that what? The Heavenly Father is for you Israelites, but you Israelites have to repent. You have to turn back from your wicked ways. Stop being rebellious. Stop not wanting to serve the Heavenly Father. Stop tr eating the shrimp, pork, crab, and lobster. Stop being a niggas. Turn back from your wicked ways. Turn back from the American civilization that you've been following and come back to your Hebraic cultures. And the Heavenly Father, peradventure, may have mercy upon you if you are of the elect. Right? Uh, so saying all that to say, going back into the fifth chapter of the, the book of Revelation, uh, Yahweh Shai, when he took the book out of the Heavenly Father's hand, Rep uh, representing that what the the seven seals have been broken and now the understanding of the scriptures has been given on to the servants, the prophets, right? 
Amos 3 and 7, surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealed his secrets unto his servants the prophets, showing you that what? The understanding of the scriptures was a mystery until now unto a chosen few. Right? So again, I'll start at verse 9. Uh, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9 says, And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art uh, sorry, thou art worthy. Who is worthy? Yahweh Shai, right? Because when you read again the previous verses, uh, John the Apostle, John the Revelator wept because no man was found worthy to open the book, right? But then the angel came to him and says, Weep not, for the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed and has, uh, is worthy to pretty much open the seals of the book, right? And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy, which is Yahweh Shai, to take the book and, and to open the seals thereof, for thou was slain, right? This is going into his pretty much what he did for us, right? When he went up on the cross, for thou was slain and has redeemed us to the Most High by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. See, it doesn't say that the other nations are going to come with us. No, it says he has redeemed us out of these other nations, out of these tongues, out from these other peoples and nations. Right. Verse 10 has made us unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. So you see. Yahweh Shai's sacrifice is going to allow us to what? In the future kingdom, under his kingdom, be what? Kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth, right? Right now in this society right now, you're not a king and a priest. You're not in rulership. You don't dictate nothing. If you try to go to your job or anything like that, some 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 of you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, excuse me, can't even dictate anything that goes on in your house with your woman or just in general. But in the kingdom to come, you're going to be able to dictate in righteousness again, of course, how things are to be run under uh, w with these uh, other heathen nations underneath you. Right. Right now, you're working a nine to five job or you, you maybe have a trade job or whatever you may have. And you're miserable. Yeah, you may be making good money, but you can feel in your spirit. You can feel in your heart of hearts that something is off there. There has to be something because I remember that before coming to the truth, there was like months before where I was like. There has to be more to life than just this, just going to work and things like that. And I kept asking myself that question. There has to be more to life than this. And then eventually things started being revealed unto me. And then, you know, the Lord opened up the truth to me. Right. So, like I said, whoever this receives this video, you have to realize that there's more to life than just going to work and slaving every day. Right. Yeah, you may be making good money, but is your spirit good? Right. That money is not going to do anything really for your spirit that 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 just gives you a temporary feeling. It's like, oh, OK, yeah, I'm able to buy nice things. Yeah, I could get me nice clothes. I could take my woman here and there. I may be able to travel here and there. But there's still an issue where it's like at the core of things, it's like eventually you're going to die. Your woman could step on. You could lose this job. You could get injured. You could get hurt to where you lose everything. Right. So you see that there, there has to be a, a, a fix. In life, like look at King Solomon, that although he was the richest man and the wisest man on the earth at his time, he still knew that all everything was vain. Uh, it was vanity. Having all this riches, having all these things was really nothing, because if you if you uh, one of the th uh, things that he said in the book of Ecclesiastes, is like, look, I could be in so many words, I could be, you know, righteous. I could be ruling well right now. But who's to know what type of a ruler the next man is going to be after me, which he's talking about his son. Right. You can do all these things, but yet you leave all this riches for your son and your son could be a complete ass and mess up everything that you built for. So we need the spirit. We need the, the you know, we need to be perfected in order to have everything be pretty much perfect in the earth. So that way there's no more screw ups, no more fuck ups, no more mess ups. Right. You will be righteous. Your seed will be righteous. Your woman be righteous and we shall all be righteous. Right. That's written of in a. Uh, Isaiah, the 60th chapter, I believe like the 21st verse, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe the 19th verse, right? It says, thy people shall be all righteous, right? And that's talking about the Israelites. Once we get the law, statute, commandments in us, and that begins, of course, with the elect, the elect being changed. Not everybody. <clears throat> This is Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 7. It says, I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. So who are the servants? Esau, Edom. When you go back to the blessing, uh, am I getting that correctly? Hold on, let me think about that. Let me go to that real quick. Not the blessing. 
I was getting that confused. Sorry, not the blessing. Where is it? Is it Genesis 25? Here we go. This is going back to the book of Genesis. Spoken about. Uh, let's just get into it. This is uh, Genesis chapter 25 and verse uh, 19. It says, these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, two, manner of, two, I'm sorry, two nations are in thy womb, two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And, sorry, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So Esau is the elder brother because he came out first. And as is written, like I was saying, what? That the elder shall serve the, uh, the younger, right? Esau is going to serve us in the kingdom. Now he's done it before, but he's going to do it again in the kingdom to come. Right, uh, under King David and under King Solomon. Right, but again, like I said, in the kingdom to come, they will also serve us for a thousand years, and then they will be t uh, pr uh, uh, taken out or pursuing to Obed uh, the book of Obadiah. Right, so who are those servants? Right, because again, remember, the elder shall serve the younger. Esau is the one that's supposed to serve us, but right now in this cap present captivity, right, which you are in captivity, we're serving them right now. Right. But again, like I was getting to the point of this video, we're slaves right now. We're we're servants to them. Right. But in the future kingdom, they're going to be servants to us along with the other nations. Right. So it says, I've seen servants upon horses. Again, who are the servants? Esau, Edom. Right. And a horse represents like a high position. So they have authority pretty much over us. Right. So this is what this is a pretty much a, a, a vision that King Solomon saw. He says, I've seen servants upon horses. And princes, which is really us, the Israelites, walking as servants upon earth, right? We're in a low position right now, right? Hence the, you know, the, the theme, if I may say, of this lesson that what? We're slaves right now. We're those princes walking as servants upon the earth. And right now, the, you know, the servant is upon the horses, or should I say he's in the high position over us, right? But very soon that's going to change with the kingdom to come, which comes with Yah when Yahweh Shai returns. Right. So this these uh, things that we're going through right now is not going to be forever. But the first step of, you know, things changing is repentance. Right. Look how powerful repentance is that. Look at us repenting. Look at the elect pretty much repenting is pretty much bringing down this kingdom. This kingdom is being now. Obviously, everything obviously goes to the glorification of Yahweh Bashim Yashai. But through repentance, we're seeing the destruction of this of this kingdom. We're seeing the shaking up of people. People can't take this truth. People can't handle and things like that. These other nations can't even I'm, when I say people, I'm talking about our own people. These other nations can't take this truth. And this this truth, right? This through repenting has shaken up the world. That's how powerful repentance is. You know, people may look at repentance as a very small thing, but it shakes things up. Right? It even causes, you know, I'm very sure, even though my my family probably doesn't tell me, and you could probably, you know, think you know. Uh, if anybody has a testimony as well out there, your family members, after seeing you for being in this truth for however long, could probably sit there and say, you know what? Even though I don't agree with that whole Israelite thing, you have become a much better person uh, and things like that. You're a lot more serious and things like that. You know, they can see the change. So how much can the world see the change in us, right? Even though, yeah, we may be looked at as everyday niggas, you know, and things like that. We may be looked at as nothing, but people can see a difference. You're not like the everyday average part of my language everyday average nigga that i see walking around there's something different about you you have some decorum some some type of light some glow about you that i can't put my finger on but there's something different about you right and these other nations and especially our people can see that so again you know like i was saying this is you know although we're going through our you know our suffering right now we're not going to be in this uh position forever Eventually, the Heavenly Father is going to send His Son to deliver us out of this captivity. But we're going to have to go through that straight gate, which is through 
the tribulation of Jacob's trouble to get to the uh, to get to the the light side, which is uh, salvation. Uh, Sirach is what I'm thinking of. This is Sirach chapter, or Ecclesiasticus uh, chapter 11, verse 5. It says, Many kings have sat down upon the ground, and one that was never thought of had, had worn the crown. Right? So, you know, even going back to the, I did a response to the Brother Shamyar's video as well. You know, he did a title pretty much going into How Can the Filth of the World Be Men of the Lord? Well, yeah, these same men that you look at as complete nothing, you know, so called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, right? Like it says, and one that was never thought of, right? Uh, these guys are going to be absolutely nothing. Who, who are they? They're, they're not doing anything, right? But very soon, these very same men that you look at as nothing are going to have a crown upon them, and they're going to be <clears throat> put in a position to dictate what goes on in your life, right? And I'm speaking, when I say in your life, I'm speaking to you heathen nations. The same man that you're probably bossing over, you know, at your job right now, you know, a so-called black, Latino, and Native American Indian, very soon, he's going to be dictating your life and telling you what to do in righteousness, of course. And you're going to like it. And at the same time, I hate it. But it's going to be in righteousness, though. Right. So I read that again. It says many kings have sat down upon the ground and one that was never thought of had won the crown. That's for you so-called blacks, Latinos and Native American Indians. And that's what we're here to tell you, that you who were never thought of as anything, right, even amongst your own people, even amongst your own women, right, that you who are never thought of as nothing, you're going to be in a very high position, right? If you're of the elect, right? That you're going to uh, be uh, have a crown on your head and you're going to dictate what happens in this world under the son of the Most High, Yahweh Shai, in righteousness, of course, uh, what goes on in this planet. What happens, you know, putting pe uh, judging people, putting people to death, right? Because death will still happen amongst these heathen nation, but death will be uh, no longer amongst the nation of Israel because we will have uh, be given that immortality. So, yeah, that's it. You know, just want to get, uh, sorry if I made this a little longer than it needed to be, but just something I want to uh, give encouragement to those who are, you know, whoever watches this video that, you know, although you may be going through your tribulations and things like that, you know, very soon, you know, of course, again, Lord's willing, you are part of the elect, that, uh, you know, very soon you're going to be, you know, this low position right now that you're in. You ain't got nothing, ain't nothing really going on for you except for your everyday average life. You know, the regular, you know, what is it? The saying, um, uh, same shit, just a different day. But very soon, uh, you know, in the kingdom to come under your house shy, it's not going to be the same shit, uh, same shit, different day. You know, every day is going to be a joy because it's going to be like, what's next? Because, you know, the kingdom is going to have, you know, you know, every day is going to be a new day to seek out the glory of the Heavenly Father. What planet can we visit? What what for new fruit? You never know, you know, just using your imagination. What fruit, what new fruit is out there? You know, what type of exotic animals does the Heavenly Father have out there? You know, uh, I don't fucking know. Uh, what type of uh, materials can I mix together and things like that? You know, what, what can I do? It's every day is going to be a new glory to see or explore the the glory or the uh you know the universe that the heavenly father has uh created right again like i mentioned the planets the uh the what type of fruits you know who knows what type of exotic animals you know things like that what other type of uh, knowledge can be learned about through those planets you know how how this planet works and things like that right because we have to a little degree how this the earth works but how does the other planets work Right. The anatomy of uh, we know some of a little bit of the anatomy of, you know, of like, you know, how the human body works. But, you know, with that perfected, but how does this new body work and things like that? Right. Uh, how's the anatomy of the uh, these exotic animals work and things like that? Right. Just spitballing ideas here. Right. You know, to go from, you know, playing on a PS5, you know, or whatever you may be doing to, you know, exploring the uh, the galaxy that the Heavenly Father, solar systems and things like that. Right. So that's what's coming, you know, but that again, that has to be believed upon in faith. You know, for some people that might be sound like a pipe dream that maybe sound like something you watching a movie, but 
this is, you know, this is true. You know, read it from not mistaken, John, the 14th chapter, right? Yahusha says in my father's uh, house is many mansions. Those mansions are different planets, right? The earth is one of the mansions. The Heavenly Father has many, and we know that the Heavenly Father is a God of abundance, right? Be fruitful and multiply, right? So who knows how many mansions the Heavenly Father has out there, which let's be honest, dealing with the Heavenly Father is infinite. So there's a lot of uh, exploration to be done in the kingdom of heaven. So yeah, I'll end it here. Lord's one, this video has been edifying and encouraging. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash. Double honors again to the apostles, elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the whole elect. Shalom.